Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. We've just gotten finished talking about Starliner and all of the problems that this new vehicle is presenting to NASA and the fact that Boeing can't seem to do much of anything right anymore. But no one's really been talking about the other major Boeing project that NASA is depending on tremendously, especially when we're talking about our return to the moon. Well, that is until now. The NASA Office of Inspector General once again made a deep dive examination of the SLS project and how Boeing was handling the whole thing, and it turns out that at least when it comes to the latest version of SLS, that is to say the Block 1B, which is going to be absolutely necessary to return astronauts to the moon this time to stay, well, Boeing is doing a horrendous job in spite of all the efforts that have been made to try to improve their management of the project. And this could spell the end of Artemis before it even really gets started. All this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon and welcome to another Angry Bulletin. First of all, I would like to thank the following incredible people. Kurt Griffith and Edward McMurray, Michael Fireberg, and Jeff Wilkes, who have recently contributed towards my efforts to get back across the Atlantic to cover the SpaceX NASA Crew-9 mission. For the first time, I've been afforded a press pass from NASA. I'd like to thank NASA very much for letting me behind the curtain for once and uh, getting an opportunity to get a behind the scenes tour, interviewing the astronauts, and of course, covering this historic launch in person. Of course, I'm gonna be bringing you all of those details here on The Angry Astronaut. If you'd like to support this trip, all the details in the description. Okay, enough about that. Let's talk about NASA's Office of Inspector General and their latest damning report of SLS. By the way, I'd also like to express my appreciation to the NASA Office of Inspector General for being so transparent about these problems and being so vigilant in tracking down these issues and trying to do something about it. For a government agency, they do a damn good job, and I think we we should all recognize that. Okay, so let's talk about the problems that we're having with SLS, or more specifically, the SLS Block 1B. Quote, scheduled to launch in September of 2028, <laughs> right, Artemis 4 will be the first flight of NASA's more powerful heavy lift rocket, the SLS Block 1B. The rocket is designed to increase the amount of cargo the SLS can deliver to the moon. A critical component of this upgrade is the Boeing's development of the SLS's new upper stage, the Exploration Upper Stage, or EUS. Once completed, the EUS will give the SLS a 40% upgrade in capability to send the Orion multi-purpose crew vehicle capsule and large cargoes to the moon from 27 metric tons under Block 1 to 38 metric tons with Block 1B. That's a big improvement. It means that you can send the Orion and everything necessary for a lengthy trip to the moon, plus an additional 11 tons of cargo. For example, a new module for the Lunar Gateway Space Station. Incidentally, if NASA had actually played their cards right on this whole thing, you could have fit the Alpaca Lunar Lander inside the Exploration Upper Stage in the same launch, therefore requiring only a single refueling mission to the moon to fuel up the alpaca for a complete journey to the moon and back. And since alpaca is reusable, you wouldn't have had to launch it again. You just have to send out one refueling tanker every time you want to send it to the moon, which is a hell of a lot less complicated than either Blue Origin or SpaceX's solution. Nevertheless, doesn't matter. Block 1B will still have at least some purpose, assuming, of course, that it actually gets off the ground. But here's the problem. Boeing's EUS contract has grown from $962 million to over $2 billion through 2025, contributing to the overall SLS Block 1B cost increase. And while NASA requires its aerospace contractors to have quality assurance programs that comply 
comply with standards on quality management systems, we found that Boeing's quality management system does not adhere to these standards or NASA requirements. NASA engages the DCMA, which stands for Defense Contract Management Agency, to conduct surveillance of Boeing's core and upper stage manufacturing efforts. And when deficiencies in quality are found, the DCMA issues corrective action requests to the contractor. Corrective action requests are labeled one through four, with level one being the least serious deficiency. From September of 2021 to September of 2023, the DCMA issued Boeing 71 Level 1 and Level 2 corrective action requests, as well as a draft Level 3 corrective action request. According to DCMA officials, this is a high number of corrective actions for a space flight system at this stage in development and reflects a recurring and degraded state of product quality control. Boeing's process to address deficiencies to date has been ineffective and the company has generally been non-responsive in taking corrective actions when the same quality control issues reoccur. Does that sound familiar? Well, it should. Let's go on. Quality control issues at Michu, which by the way is where a lot of the assembly work is done on the core stage of SLS and also on the exploration upper stage, are largely due to the lack of a sufficient number of trained and experienced aerospace workers at Boeing. <laughs> Surprised anybody still works at that company that has any desire to protect their reputation or their careers. But let's go on. To mitigate to mitigate these challenges, Boeing provides training and work orders to its employees. Considering the significant quality control deficiencies at Michu, we found these efforts to be inadequate. For example, during our visit to Michu in April of 2023, we observed a liquid oxygen fuel tank dome, a critical component of the SLS Core Stage 3 segregated and pending disposition on whether and how it can be safely used going forward due to welds that did not meet NASA's specifications. Kind of late to notice these sorts of issues. According to NASA officials, the welding issues arose due to Boeing's inexperienced technicians and inadequate work order planning and supervision. The lack of a trained and qualified workforce increases the risk that Boeing will continue to manufacture parts and components that do not adhere to NASA's requirements and industry standards. We project SLS Block 1B costs will reach approximately $5.7 billion before the system is scheduled to launch in 2028. This is $700 million more than NASA's 2023 agency baseline commitment, which established a cost and schedule baseline at nearly $5 billion, which is a huge amount of money to begin with, but nevertheless, exploration upper stage development accounts for more than half of that cost, which we estimate will increase from an initial cost of $962 million in 2017 to nearly $2.8 billion through 2028. Boeing's delivery of the exploration upper stage to NASA has also been delayed from February of 2021 to April of 2027, over six years. And when combined with other factors, suggests the September 2028 Artemis IV launch date could be delayed as well. I'd say that's almost certainly the case. Factors contributing to these cost increases and scheduled delays include redirection of EUS funds to the core stage during Artemis 1 production, changing Artemis mission assignments, maintaining an extended workforce seven years more than planned, manufacturing issues, and supply chain challenges. NASA delayed establishing the Block 1B agency baseline commitment until December of 2023, after 10 years of development and much later in the project life cycle than NASA's standard practice. 
And to make matters worse, according to the OIG, this situation is not going to improve without outside intervention. Primarily, at least one of the major reasons, is because the Boeing's Defense Earned Value Management System, which NASA uses to measure contract cost and schedule progress, and is required on all projects with a life cycle cost greater than $250 million, has been disapproved by the Department of Defense since 2020. This precludes Boeing from reliably predicting an exploration upper stage delivery date or cost estimate in the long run. So obviously Boeing is not up to handling this task and a lot of you are probably screaming at the TV right now and saying let's just go ahead and handle this whole thing over to SpaceX and Starship. Well let me briefly explain to you why NASA is unlikely to go that route right now. We have no idea how long it's going to be before Starship is going to be safe enough to carry human beings up to orbit and then to bring them back down through the atmosphere to a safe landing. It could be 10 years, perhaps even longer, or Starship may simply never be safe enough to carry human passengers from the surface of the Earth up to orbit and back, and certainly not in the short run. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, well, let's just go ahead and transfer crew over in orbit utilizing Crew Dragon. Well, there's a problem with that theory as well, and I'm going to provide a brief explanation. There is some question as to whether or not Starship is going to have enough fuel to travel all the way from low Earth orbit to land safely on the moon and then get all the way back to low Earth orbit and decelerate into a safe orbit in the process. If you look at this Delta V map, you will see that the amount of kilometers per second worth of Delta V required to reach the lunar surface is 6 0.4 kilometers per second approximately, which means to get all the way back to low Earth orbit would require another 6.4 kilometers per second or a total of 12.8. This is actually substantially more delta V than it is required to get Starship from Earth orbit to the surface of Mars, and I seriously doubt whether or not Starship can actually carry enough fuel to do that. The only way you can really cheat on this system is if you use Earth's atmosphere to decelerate, meaning that you have to carry out a successful re-entry into Earth's atmosphere without having an opportunity to enter a safe orbit and then dock with a crew dragon, meaning that if we're going to use Starship to take astronauts all the way to the moon and back, we are going to have no choice but to utilize an atmospheric re-entry regardless of how dangerous that might be. And in my opinion, it's going to be a while before NASA is really going to be comfortable with that solution. Now, for those of you who think that I'm full of crap on all of this and are asking how was Dear Moon supposed to do all of this if they weren't going to be able to dock with Crew Dragon in Earth orbit, well, Dear Moon was never going to set down on the surface of the moon. It was just going to carry out a free return orbit around the moon, and that saves a ton of Delta V. If you're actually going to land on the moon and then come back and not use the atmosphere to decelerate, it requires requires a lot of Delta V and a lot of fuel. As I say, I'm not absolutely certain that Starship can't do it, but it's going to be hard pressed. The only solution that I can see, maybe, is to refuel Starship in lunar orbit as well, which adds a hell of a lot of complexity to a future mission. Just getting SLS working properly is still the simplest solution. The problem is, is we've got Boeing running the show still. So here's what the Office of Inspector General recommends. Number one, coordinate with Boeing, the SLS stage's prime contractor, to develop a quality management system training program that is compliant with current NASA standards and reviewed by the appropriate NASA officials, and two, institute financial penalties for Boeing's non-compliance with quality control standards to minimize the impact on the Artemis campaign's timeline and achieve sustainability 
we recommend that the Associate Administrator for the Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, do the number three, perform a detailed cost overrun analysis on Boeing Stages contract for EUS development and to provide greater visibility into cost and schedule estimates for SLS upgrades. The OIG recommends that NASA coordinate with the DCMA to ensure contractual compliance. So, unsurprisingly, NASA did not respond well to recommendation number two, because according to them, financial penalties fall outside the bounds of the contract. What? You mean NASA signed a contract with Boeing that has no financial penalties whatsoever, regardless of how bad of a job they do? It's just ridiculous. Hard to believe that this contract was ever signed, and at this point, I really think it just needs to be either canceled or totally renegotiated. And at the very least, I, I think the OIG's recommendations are good, but I don't think they go far enough. I really think that this contract needs to be handed over to an independent company that is going to review the processes and to make sure Boeing is actually doing their job. Somebody who's familiar with the contract, somebody who's familiar with how Boeing does things, but somebody who's still independent and can do what's right for NASA and for the American people rather than for for themselves. That company, in my opinion, is Dynetics. They are already building the universal stage adapter for the exploration upper stage anyway, and given how important a component that is for the EUS, they should understand most of the construction and engineering going into that part of the rocket anyway. Seems to me that Dynetics would understand a lot about how the SLS contract is built and what the engineering requirements for the uh, for the rocket overall are and they could probably provide a great deal of effective oversight the responsibility needs to be given to somebody because Boeing clearly can't handle it whether it's the 737 the Starliner or NASA's new moon rocket Boeing clearly can't handle any of these projects on their own if they can handle them at all and we need to take decisive action if there is to be any hope of us returning to the moon before the end of this decade. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, stay angry about space.